these are several newspapers that had articles about Miracle Wheat. And which, and actually, that's for, the title. Yeah, which, for the record, it wasn't just Russell publishing uh, Miracle Wheat and touting it. It, it was na- it was nationally in magazines, actually in other parts of the world. Yeah, and and these are the claims. Remember that those two Watchtower articles we just looked at are quoting these newspaper articles. So here's a sampling of these newspaper articles. The Democratic Advocate, The Gazette, Lexington, Virginia, The Tazewell Republican, The Virginia Gazette in Williamsburg, The Newark Post, Farmer's Champion, The Newark Post, The Evening Journal in Wilmington, Delaware, The Tulsa Daily World, or The Evening Star in Washington, D.C., Newark Post, Evening Journal, and The Golden Valley Chronicle. Uh, That's actually Billings County, North Dakota. Again, talking about this wheat, uh, experiments in, in the wheat growing, and some of the outrageous claims that were were being made about the wheat. And you'll notice if you're looking at the slide here, it says Stoner's Wheat, which was named after the farmer who produced the strain. The government had to investigate because some people were being taken in. Here's the official United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, report about the Alaska and Stoner or Miracle Wheats, two varieties much misrepresented. And this was published in April 1916. And they document in it the varieties of this type of wheat. And basically, they also give its history. So it came to the Americas in colonial times. And they also talk about Mr. Stoner. Now, Mr. Stoner found this growing in his yard, and he started growing it himself. He thought he could make money from it. So he set up a corporation and had a little pamphlet printed. And he was trying to get people to buy it with what the government suggests were exaggerated claims. It was these exaggerated claims that ended up in the newspaper reports that were published in the towers. How would Russell and his followers would have known what they saw in in the newspaper was true or not? It's published in the newspaper. It had to be true. If it's on the internet, it has to be true. Right, Paul? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So... Mr. Stoner was selling it for about $1.25 a pound, something like that. Basically, the government saying Mr. Stoner was a con man. And his document contained what was purported to be a government report from an agent who inspected Stoner's weed fields. The language of the report was changed from the actual original document. It said originally that the miracle wheat yielded from three to five bushels more than other varieties on the same farm. But he changed it in his pamphlet to it actually yielded two to three times the yield of other varieties. There's a whole different story there. So the USDA document basically concludes that it wasn't special or, or there was nothing miracle about it, at least what Stoner was claiming. And Stoner would try and sell it around the country in various places, and he would keep changing the name, and and the government kind of tracks us through. So they call it the Eden wheat, or the marvelous wheat, or this kind of wheat, or that kind of wheat, Egyptian wheat, and I forget some of the other ones, right? There are dozens of different names listed because he kept trying to sell it around the country. It appears the Watchtower was naive enough to believe Stoner's documentation. I mean, it looked official, claimed to be from an official USDA inspector. How could they know? You know, uh, it was published and, in the and, newspapers, right? So, <laughs> and once again, this wasn't like a lot of people want to p- pin this on Russell. Uh, it wasn't his brainchild. The others brought this to his attention as a good as a good thing to do, and and he went along with it. Uh, but it wasn't his idea. Hey, let's go out and sell Miracle Wheat, as many people in the past have suggested. Well, let's read on in the documentation and and see exactly what the history says about that. Uh, More on that to come. Earlier, we mentioned that would have been the end of the story. They had the two articles on it, basically clippings from the newspapers around that that we've shown. That would have been the end of the story, except Bonet pushed it a little further. Bonet was the businessman. Bonet was the salesman. So in the June 15th, 1911 Watchtower... Bonet asks for an insert in the paper, and it says a donation of 
Miracle Wheat. Brother Bonet writes us that he has gradually accumulated a crop of Miracle Wheat from the few grains he obtained as a start. There's more on this story, too. We'll get there in just a bit. He prefers that the first opportunity for obtaining this wheat shall go to the Watchtower readers. He'll sell it for a dollar. Remember, the USDA document says that Stoner is selling it for a dollar twenty-five, or actually, they're saying he sold it for dollar twenty-five to five dollars, depending how much he could make from it. So Bonet is suggesting the price be set at a dollar. We'll sell this and we'll donate all the proceeds to to Watchtower. So basically, they're asking for a donation to Watchtower. I'm the way the story ended up. I'm guessing Russell thought in the end, Bonet should have kept his bright ideas to himself, you know? So <laughs> it's with the trouble that came out of it. And if you really look at it, how it's written in the tower it is just like Russell's thoughts from the intention. Brother Bonet promises to be ready to ship this. He's not making really the claim himself. He, he's publishing this for somebody else. Now, this is this is Bonet's brainchild. It wasn't Bonet's wheat. It was the stoner's wheat. And as we've seen, stoner was misrepresenting the public. Stoner was a con man, a con artist. And the Watchtower got taken into his scheme. They got taken by the con. They fell for it. When the Brooklyn Eagle sees this, they go on attack. There was a bank at the time, the the Union Bank. And they, in their cartoon, they change it to Onion Bank. And there was a scam going on at this Union Bank. And it was, it, it gained national news. And so the cartoon makes it out like Russell's trying to make money from, from this miracle wheat. And you see the guy from the Onion Bank saying, hey, you're wasting your time. Come on in here. Right? And if it says Pastor Russell can get a dollar a pound for miracle wheat, what could he have got for Miracle stocks and bonds as a director in the old Union Bank? Basically, I think they're suggesting that Russell wasn't trying to make money out of it. Or if he was trying to make money out of it, he wasn't doing that good of a job, right? They just kind of make him look like a silly old codger in, in the article. Or, or they're implying something further that instead of selling the wheat, he should invest in the company that makes it and be a director like he is at, at the society and make even more money. You can kind of take that both ways, no? Yeah, I guess you could. I mean, they, again, Russell, again, but this is Bonet's brainchild. This is Bonet's idea. And Russell got in, involved in it, unfortunately. He got wrapped up in it. And that's well, when, here like, when the Brooklyn Eagle goes on attack, right? It, it's, you know, that's like saying you are you own a Walmart and one of your drivers kills drunk driving a Walmart truck, drunk driving kill. Walmart somehow becomes responsible for it. Not the driver. <laughs> You know, yeah. They look at, oh, they look at Walmart. So to an extent, Bonet being part of of the, the, the Brooklyn Tower, by default, drug Russell in, into it. So there was another person who worked at Watchtower who made another suggestion that I think Russell thought later on wasn't a very good idea. Russell writes an article in the tower called as deceivers and yet true. And it's about this miracle wheats scam. They got involved in, uh, they were taken just like, uh, the others. Uh, a lot of people got in, got taken by it. This stoners claims. So when the Brooklyn Eagle went on attack, it was suggested by the watchtower's lawyer. And he's described in the in Brooklyn Eagle article as, a tall man in black who was the general counsel for the society. And he didn't care to give his name to the Brooklyn Eagle, but he saw an opportunity and suggested Russell sue for libel. Who was that tall man in black who was the society's legal counsel? None other than Rutherford himself. Hey, we can make some money off of this. Well, once again, a pattern of 
rather than admitting anything and, and moving forward, <laughs> let's <laughs> let's create new light and put a spin on it and <laughs> sue for it on top of it. So it, it, this is something. It, it, it's funny how how people when somebody else is paying for it and taking the responsibility, everybody is an armchair quarterback and has a lot of great ideas for you. But yet when it came down to it, a nameless character, he didn't want to attach a, a name to it. You know, this was all Russell's. So th there's a lot, a lot to this story. It, it was just interesting to find Rutherford involved in the story uh, in in this detail. I hadn't seen that before. Are you surprised? The Brooklyn Eagle kept on the attack, one article after the other, about Miracle Wheat. Skeptical Uncle Sam seeks to know more about Miracle Grain. We just saw the report that they, they wrote about it. Claims for Miracle Wheat not merited. Miracle Wheat in demand on the produce exchange. They were people that were still selling it under various names. And that's why the USDA report has to list those various names. According to the report, it depended which climate you had grown it in. Also, how far apart did you plant the seed? Also, the wheat that it did grow also didn't produce wheat bread that was of a superior quality, basically. And, when and they that's, saw that's what I'm trying to get through, because it really wasn't. Um, and two, a lot of people thought it was who were XJWs and they want it to because they want everything about Watchtower organization slammed. Here's more examples of the Brooklyn Eagles attacks on Charles C.S. Russell. Church sales room for Mirko Weed at $60 per bushel. Sold at the Tabernacle. And we also had some discussion about Docky in our Who Was E.L. Docky discussion. Make sure you go back and look at that video too, because he was involved somewhat here, but he seems to be more like a willing participant, but didn't really know what was going on as much as Bonet did. And Bonet, Bonet is the one who set the price. Bonet is the one who had the brilliant idea. It was Bonet's scheme. The others got roped into his scheme and, and he was trying to help, or at least he thought he was trying to help and, you know, look what became of it. It was an embarrassment. And as stated earlier, if anyone was trying to make money at the society, it was Rutherford more than anyone else, because he's the one who seems to have suggested to sue the Brooklyn Eagle. Here's one of the Watchtower publications, an original. It says, a Brooklyn Eagle sued for $100,000. Which in its day was a hefty sum. Yeah, yeah. We've talked about some of these papers before. This is their advertising material. And we discussed some of those in the Secret Watchtower newspaper discussion, so you can go take a look there. Over the years, you see Miracle Wheat keep popping up again in Watchtower literature. So the you can see some want ads on the right from various issues of the New Era Enterprise in the 1920s. For sale, Miracle Wheat, $2 per bushel. And that's from John Rain. Not John Wayne, the cowboy actor, but John Rain. This, again, this was all Bonet's idea, and Bonet's trying to defend himself. So he publishes an article in the Golden Age, Facts About Miracle Wheat. And this is April 1924 issue. The New Era Enterprise has an article in the October 19th, 1920 issue. And it says, Miracle Wheat One. There's a company, and, and they were Bible students, the H. Weber and Sons Company. They grew the wheat, and they actually won first prize for three years during the First World War. And this evening capital, the Maryland Gazette, actually has a recording of one of these wins, first prize for growing this wheat. It says greatest yield per acre from 25 acres or more. The first prize was $1,000. And the first prize was awarded to William H. Weber and Sons. This is Bonet's bright idea. This is Bonet's pricing. Bonet had been a farmer. How much did Bonet know about pricing wheat? Well, as we've seen, people were doctors, people were judges who did not actually practice. So, 
was Bonang a farmer that really didn't do too much farming? Well, or he was just looking at the price that Stoner was selling it for. And as we saw, Stoner was selling it for, in the USDA literature, it says Stoner was selling this wheat for a dollar twenty-five to five dollars a pound, which is a lot more than Watchtower was selling it for. But watch, you know, Bonet got roped into his scheme, Stoner's scheme, unfortunately. But who was this Weber? They were florists. They were known for their flowers, but they also sold other seeds and other things like that. So you could see they, they had poinsettias for Christmas flowers. Uh, they were selling for Mother's Day. Uh, Easter lilies are now in. A carload of them, right? <laughs> so I like this little advertisement I placed over the top of the photo. It says that we believe that flowers mark a correct social taste. So that was, that was kind of nice. And that would have been their homestead. Big house. Mansion size house. They, they made good money. Russell died. You can see that just giant flower extravaganza. That was from the Weber and Sons Company. Which and was a can... very, once again, a very kind gesture on his part. Yeah. And unlike Rutherford's funeral, which more or less <laughs> that they went on as if he never lived, um, you could see the admiration. People genuinely, re really, really cared for Russell. And we'll get into a little bit of Rutherford's death and burial and where that is in a future discussion. You can see the burial, some shots from the graveyard there. In the upper left corner, Bonet is the one with the, hat, the black hat right in the front there, looking off camera. And that was his farmhouse down at the bottom of the hill. Uh, that's him again in the next photo in the center to the right. And then that's him at a baptism with Russell on the right. In the lower right corner, that's Bonet with the editor of the St. Paul Enterprise, William Abbott. We showed this photo and had a discussion on it in our, our Watchtower Secret newspaper discussion. And it was Bonet's idea, another one of his bright ideas, to erect the pyramid as a monument. The Watchtower also made note that the Miracle Wheat took a prize. The St. Paul Enterprise also had some other advertisements for it. Have limited amount of pure strain Miracle Wheat from Brother Jared's crop that was shown at the Panama Exposition. And that was one that was won at the World's Fair, the one where Rutherford and his wife were. It's rumored that in while he was in California and he wasn't there long, he was working in a de department store. We don't have any verification of that, but we do have hearsay. But also in the 1915-16 period, he was in California at the World's Fair. Uh, just a side note of history for your Little House in the Prairie fans. Laura Ingalls Wilder was also at the same fair. There's actually a book, West from Home or something like that. Laura Ingalls writes letters back home about her trip to the World's Fair with her daughter Rose at the time. Laura Ingalls Wilder and Rutherford at the same place. They might have crossed paths. <laughs> There's a very interesting advertisement in the Enterprise that says, Stolen on December 4th, one five-passenger Ford car, 1917 model. It has cut in back a front seat about three inches long. It says, This car was bought with Miracle Wheat to be used with the service of the truth. It will give $25 for a return of car or information about its whereabouts. Yeah, at least somebody <laughs> made some money growing Miracle Wheat. Even if the car was stolen, unfortunately, but... But Miracle Wheat had a whole history of problems, <laughs> apparently. We we mentioned also that um, earlier that Bonet tried to defend himself on his Miracle Wheat ideas. Uh, Rutherford did the same. He In his booklet, A Great Battle in the Ecclesiastical Heavens, as seen by a lawyer. Inside, he has a whole section just on uh, Miracle Wheat. Bonet writes his article in the Golden Age to try and defend himself. I think this is... Rutherford's attempt at defending himself, as we've shown in that want ad about the, the car being stolen, there are some people who are making some money from the wheat, from growing the wheat, and there are letters in the St. Paul Enterprise in 1915 about it. John Miller in Hopkins, Missouri writes an article to uh, the farming business and basically says, I bought some of this wheat, but it wasn't from Pastor Russell, it was from Mr. Bonet. It seems like they were basically trying to justify some people have had success with the Miracle Wheat. Yeah. And it wasn't just all complete failure. 
So again, this is all Bonet's idea. Over the years, the Watchtower attempted to defend itself from the Miracle Wheat, selling it less than what others were selling it for. Certainly, they weren't selling it at a loss, but where did they get the Miracle Wheat from? That's interesting. What story Bonet tells about it later? 